Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzle. You're watching my channel, Mizzle14. And I'm back doing a review of Iyana Fix My Life, Season 7, Episode 6, Home Invasion Harvest Story. Alright, so if you see my eyes a little puffy and a little red, it's because I will just finish watching the Iyana episode that I'm about to do a review now. And it just had me teary. Like, at certain points of the day, I'll just boo him crying. And because I have empathy and sympathize, look like I'm about to tell now a little bit, of the story. Because in some way, shape, or form, all of us have some family members who's into the street life. Or known people who are in the street life. And this could happen to any one of us. So, and the fact that the family knew about this, and it just happened to the point in the decisions that could possibly lead to this very horrible story. It's crazy. So I'm going to explain the story and I'm going to explain my viewpoints and stuff like that. So we have Anne. Anne and Shatara and their mother, Annette, was at the show. The show. They came. Anne wrote the show. She brought her mother, their mother, and she, her sister Shatara to the show. Anne was dating a drug dealer. I gotta put it out there. Anne was dating a drug dealer. So you know when you date a drug dealer, you deal with the negative and positive aspects of the lifestyle. Now, I say positive because people choose to deal with drug dealers because of the money, the fast money. Because they deal with drugs. A lot of people like to um, buy drugs. So they get the fast money. They get the cars. They get the house. They don't have to really worry about money. Even though it's not legal money per se, but still fast money. That's what I say the positive is because most people who deal with drugs is because they like the fast lifestyle. They like the protection. They like that a person, the bad boy type of thing or something like that. But sometimes it's, it mimics the lifestyle they was growing up with. And I'll explain that in a minute. So, she was dating a drug dealer. Also, people overlook the negative aspects of drug dealing. Drug dealing with someone who's doing drugs. It's the aspect of you being guilty by association. You're guilty by association. When you get in trouble in the law, they will loop you with the drug dealer because you've been a known associate of the drug dealer. Now, as of that, as of what, at the same time, you also, it's a product of targets for the enemy, the drug dealer enemies, if they need to raid your house or anything. And this is this exactly what happened. You is a part of target. If they know what the person lives at and they know who's the person drug dealer is like associated with the family, who they he loves and who they he or she loves, they will target that person to hurt the person they um going after. So anybody is in it's not innocent. Anybody could get it. That's what basically they like things. So being a street life and drug dealer, it's no morals. It's no morality. Stuff happens. Kids, aunties, cousins, grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad. Anybody's a target when people is coming after the person who is dealing drugs and they have bad blood with. And no matter what you do, that's the target. So that's why I say people who deal with drug dealers, you got to understand, you got to set both the ups and the downs of dealing with someone who's like that. Because in any moment, you could be been target. And it's not, it not necessarily meant for you. But since you are casualty in this war, that's what exactly what happened. So, the story, this Anne was dating a drug dealer. And her cousin, I think Sha uh, Shaquan, and her son or daughter, Carla, she wanted to have a birthday party for her daughter. I think Shaquan, I think the name was Shaquan, the cousin, and her daughter, Carla, she wanted to have a birthday party at Ann House. She agreed to have a party at the Ann House. That was a big mistake because Ann House is a hot spot. People know in the neighborhood that she's dealing with a drug dealer. So the enemies would know to raid the house if they need to have any issues because I think the boyfriend was living with her at the time. So that was a hot spot. And that was a big mistake in their part to even have it there. So... They have a birthday party at the house. And children was not there. Now, if you have a kid's party at the house, why are your own kids not there? That's part of the reason why her sister, Shantara, was upset. Or at least her somewhat upset and angst with her sister, Anne. 
her kids wasn't there. Shantala bought bought her two kids, Tony, is the son who was in this episode, and her daughter to the party. That while they had the midst of the party, Anne House was home invaded. And home invaded by her boyfriend's enemies. They came with looking for her boyfriend. And the people who are named Shaquan, Carla, Shantavia, and the two, and her niece and nephew, who is Shantavia kids, all were casualties in this part of war between the enemy and the drug dealer boyfriend. And they all were victims of gun violence. Shaquan and Carla did not make it. Shaquan and Carla, yeah, the cousins, did not make it. Shatala was the victim and, her t and she got hit in the neck. Shatala's son Tony and her daughter both got hit in the head and Tony is living with one eye. He got a prosthetic eye. He got living with one eye. And the daughter, she's okay, but she lost part of her skull. So they both her daughters, no, both her kids, Shatala's kids, is disability. And got hit as well. So the cousins is dead. Shatara and them are living. They got maimed. And yours was not touched. Because they wasn't there. So for 14 years. This happened in 2006. We in 2020. We in 2020. 2020. So for 14 years. This happened. 14 years ago, this happened. Tony was 4 years old at the time. He's 18 now. All this time happened, and there was no talking about it and stuff like that, because Shataria was angry. I guess part of Anne was guilt and stuff like that. So they never really asked the question. They never really talked to each other, and they never really tried. Anne said she tried to talk to Shataria, her sister, but her sister was shutting her out. Don't want to deal with her and everything, because part is stuff, stuff that I need to mention that as well. Now, Okay, it's more to the story. So, that all happened. Now, more revelations will reveal that the, Anne, Shaquan, and Carla was her hostage. Shaquan was shielding her daughter for what happened. And, you know, they both died. And, I guess Shataria was ringing the bell. And when that happened, I did and ran to the door or something like that. I was running and would tell the Shatari to run, 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 run. And run, ran. Shatari ran, but she did not ran with her kids. She left the kids in the porch. Now I'm gonna explain about that in a minute. Cause I know most people say, oh wow, why she did that? It's like that. It's easier said than done when you're in that split second knowing that that Area is a hot spot. Knowing something happened, all that stuff, and it's just like your mind is in flight and flight or fight mode. And right there, when she heard the wind run, she just ran. So that's part of her decision. So part of her anger, guilt, and regret is that she did that. But she left her kids and she ran. But her kids still got harmed. She also got harmed as well. And um. That's that. So all years, it has never been spoken about. Because each party, including their mother, I will get to their mother in a minute, had a part into this generation and how everything happened. So, and while I was telling the story, I was so, I was like, wow. It was building up. Until later on in the episode, I started getting teary eyes, started crying a little bit more about the story and how they broke down, how Tony talked and all that stuff. It was a lot to go on because it was heavy. So, the reason why I talk about the mom's part of it is that Anne revealed that her father, Shataria and Anne's father, was a drug dealer. So the mom knew because she said he was, she was dating him, he was a construction worker. And at first he wasn't doing the drugs and afterwards he started doing the drugs but she knew about it. But didn't tell her kids anything about it. And then on such so she put her kids in harm's way. Because any time, any moment, her house could have got raided. 
anything because she didn't want a husband who was drug dealer. She stayed, even after he started dealing drugs, she stayed because of the comfortability of the lifestyle. Now, she said she said she didn't have a good education, so she got her GED, then she went to school for nursing, and she did correctional nursing to pay back all the people that something that her father, her husband, took away. So, it's like a guilt that she did with another drug dealer, and then she ended up doing correctional nursing to be a payback to give back to the community for something that her part, her husband could be a part of, um, taking away people, she probably shoot, um, shooting people, probably getting at people, selling drugs to stuff. So that's part of her. And, and that aspect normalized the street life. So it became so normal that it was okay. This is, this is what they was grew up in. This is the part of the environment. So, and she said she was good with her father. Uh, her father. But her father was went to jail when she was 16, so she started stripping on the pole. Stripping. And then she said for nine years she started stripping. And then she started dating a drug dealer and everything. And also, even after that incident happened, she didn't stop. She didn't break up with the drug dealer. She's still with the person. I don't know. To now, she's still with him. But at that time, she was still with him. They didn't break up. Okay, and she chose a little drug dealer. Now, Shatavia mentioned that Tony' father is a drug dealer, so they all chose people who they grew up knowing. Their father was a drug dealer, so you mostly mimic the person that you grew up in, especially by the loss of the person that you was feeling for, you're yearning for. Went to jail, big part of it. Your mom normalized it. She did with something like that. They probably got custody of the lifestyle they was getting. So they chose partners to have children with or be in a relationship with that mimic their what their father was. That's all their decision they made to know that even with because something didn't happen to Ann and Shataria when the father was a drug dealer, doesn't mean it couldn't happen to them. At any given moment. Meaning that what happened with Ann House when it got evaded of that. As I say, you got to accept the negatives a part of the lifestyle too. You just can't accept just the fast money. You got to also accept the negative. And that's what was happening. That they normalized it and they realized and they knew it's a possibility this could happen. But they didn't get, they didn't stop anything from happening. Not to stop the whole invasion. I mean, it happened, it happens. But to stop get into the lifestyle. Why you couldn't choose somebody else? Why you couldn't break the cycle and different choose a different path or whatever. So I guess in that moment when all that stuff happened, and shut herself down, neck down, she shut it down. It's all in her head and she never expressed her emotions. So I guess part of Chartavia's angry towards Anne is that it's like she moved on. She didn't look back. She didn't even think about it. She's not hurt by what happened. She don't feel sorry or guilty, even though Ann does feel all that. But she didn't exp show it or express it in her emotions to let everybody know that she feels guilty, regret, shame, anger. That was the four parts that Ann was saying in the medicine well. It was anger, regret, shame, and guilt. And, um, she was feeling most of um, those things. And she angled herself to even part, choose that lifestyle that she was into. But that's part of the part that she was living in. So, um, when we talk to Shataria, and we, that's what we find out Shataria said when she and told her to van, she ran. And she left her kids in the porch. And that was one of her biggest regrets. So she regret. And also she said like if she die and she gone tomorrow, who will take care of her son? Because she had to take care of her son and Tony, he had to take four medications every morning. Part of his, one of the medications for seizures and stuff like that. And 
she talked about it and she didn't feel joy about it. Cause obviously you don't feel joy. And she said she had a moment. She has up there moments that she doesn't feel happy about it, so like that. But it's your son. You put him first. But then the fact they don't have a joy about it, it's like something that is eating you up inside. And part of it, she revealed that. And also part of her revelations is that she knew her sister' house was a hot spot. But she still decided to take her kid to the party. So sometimes it's a decision we make that has caused all of this. Now, they never talked about it. She blamed her sister for everything because all everything said and done, she blamed Anne for everything. Everything she blamed Anne for. And she was like, if it happened to me, because I know I was in, I was dating drugs this too, I want to get bloodshed. We get a revenge. But it was like, that, that's not going to help. That's not going to help at all. Because if you try to get revenge, they're going to keep retaliating your back and then go back and forth. And then you will have a war, a bloodshed. No, that's not what you want. You saying that, but that's not what you want. And she also feel like that they didn't do anything after what happened. But what do you want? So Ann saying, listen, we not scarface. face. We don't have guns to get that thing, people. Those people's in jail now. They in prison. They we can't do nothing about that. They getting life sentences. And they also went to trial. I think they went to trial after twelve years. They finally went to trial and then the people got life sentences on them. So they not getting out. So they got to do justice, even though it took a long time, but they got to do justice. But I think she said the last thing she remember when they went on trial and stand, I think Tony or somebody said that oh uh, this will I get for even coming, or this is what I get for even coming to your house. And I ate in up because she felt all of that. But the fact that she never showed emotions, nobody knew what's going on. You know why asked questions, nobody said anything. Like they keep everything just silent. And it needs to be said. You can't heal and learn and try to build get closer to each other if y'all never talked about it. Or never said anything. Now Annette, the grandma, take a Tony around to those houses and don't really speak about it. He remember the house that happened, but she never really explained anything what happened. So, everybody has some hand into their decisions. Shartari's decision to take her kids to the spot where she know it was a hot spot. And having a party at the house where she know it was a hot spot. And dealing with a drug dealer who had issues with someone out in the streets. They all know about this, but they all kept it quiet. They normalize it. They say, oh, it never happened, no, it never happened. It didn't happen to me when I was young, so it's not gonna happen to y'all, no, but it happens. And so they all have to express that and had to realize that she was expressing emotions. So she had to let them be known to her sister and her mom that she feels things. It hurt her. It kills her inside that her decision that she made destroyed the family. To the point to this, it didn't add magnitude. It had caused deaths and bloodshed and disabilities, all that stuff. She feels it. That she had to let, express us that. She totally realized she made some poor decisions herself that led to what happened. And the fact that you don't want to talk to your son uh, about what's happening, you keep it shielded, like keeping a secret if it's trying to protect them. But protecting them by calling a secret is not helping. Now, good God that Tony is a grace of a child of God that he decided to break the cycle and not become his father because Chantal revealed to her son because Tony expressed that he wanted to get closure of knowing what happened that day. He just wanted to get closure of exactly what happened. Why this happened to him? Why his disability? Because a part of him feel like he's not normal anymore because he got one eye. He feel hurt. He get ticked or pe um teased by kids in school because I know it happens people get teased by little simple things like you you too short you too tall you too fat gap tooth all that stuff you too dark or too light whatever you get teased by a little minimal things but imagine when him with a whole disability one live him on one eye how much he was going through in school that part turned me up the most because that he was telling his story and and then mom and Shatari, they was crying. I was crying. I was like, oh my gosh, it was a tear, tear fest tonight. If y'all watch this episode, y'all can feel it too. And part of it, because also, like I said, most of us know family members who's in that lifestyle. Or dealing with someone who's in that lifestyle. 
who did a probably dating joke that is now because you like the fast money. But knowing that this harvest story could have been your life. So think about that before you think about, oh, yes, I got protection. I got this. But yes, the negative side wheels his head as well. And he told this story. And they all explained the truth and said, Shh. and that the grandma told that, yes, my decision, um, your, your mom, father, your grandpa was a drug dealer. I knew about this. I normalized it. I was in the street life. I didn't spoke about it and everything. And I put them in harm's way. And also, Iyana was trying to get Shatara to understand that your mom trajectory out to this lifestyle. And she didn't protect y'all. I mean, yeah, she's working on herself, but she didn't protect y'all as much. Everything, she get that. But at the same time, Paul's decision to stay in, even though she knew that he just became one, it's her fault. So she explained that truth. He didn't know that. Um, and explained what happened, that her house was the hot spot. It happened in the house and everything, because she knew he got shot there. She tried to realize, express that her f his father was a drug dealer. He didn't know that, but he said he glad he decided, because he going to school for ministry. He goes to seminary school. So it was nice that he decided to break that cycle and not become a drug dealer himself. And because it's a cycle he didn't know that his father was, but now that he knew that he realized he don't want to be his father, so he continue the path. But also his part of the thing is compassion and because he needs to break his silence. He was holding stuff in that he never expresses to his mom and everything about how he feels. And he finally gets to express himself. And that's when they more almost crying and they say forgive me all that stuff. He led the session he ended the session with prayer. And his hope is healing. And it seemed like they did get the healing that they need that. Shatari said sort of like we should go to trauma therapist. Because it's, this trauma did happen, it affected every part of the family, all the stuff. And even the, even the, what's Kwan, the, that cousin and all that stuff like that, she mentioned that maybe it was a bad mistake to even have the party here. Maybe when they got hostage, she mentioned that. And that's the last thing she heard from my cousin before she passed, she died, all that stuff, that it wasn't a good thing to happen here. And they all had their peace, they hug it out and stuff. And at the end, the sisters are closer now. They are very close. And they continue to build up their own relationship. Tony is... I think he's seen a therapist. And also, he's working on living his lifestyle. And, and Yana told him, can you look up Sam Davis Jr. and something like that? And he said he don't know who that is. So he said, well, look him up because he live or not. I think that's the name. Don't get me wrong because I didn't focus on the name. But she gave him somebody to look up. And... Good, and that was that. That was a this was a good episode. Episode like this is really good. It's it's very rare that I really cry. So when I get episodes like this that make me tear up, it it shows that I feel for them, and I just hope that they can heal and move forward. And which seems like they are because they're getting closer and they can move past it. So that was any other fix my life, y'all. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Tell me how y'all feel about this. Tell me if y'all know someone, y'all have similar stories, go in the comment section. I would love to really read stories and hear things about this. So, talk to y'all later, right? Peace.